775 here working on some generational solar. We're uh, <laughs> my house is up there, grandma's house is here, and this house came up for sale, which we recently purchased. And my daughter and her fiance are taking it over. And part of uh, part of that, I kind of promised that uh, <laughs> I'd put a solar system in here. So in order to do that, I'm having to take down some trees. So it's today the cedar is losing, solar is winning. And so I'm gonna be taking down, probably I'm tempted to take those last two. It's a very nice tree, leaving some really nice weeping willows. Um, but in order to get this solar to work on this property, I need to break the array. It was gonna be a 28 panel, which would just mess up this side yard. So we're gonna do two 14 panel arrays. And this is going to have the I'm going to use the Discover Slimline rack and have everything outside. Um, just in anticipation of new rules coming, NFPA 855, UFC 20, UFC? Uh, <laughs> IFC 25 for um, International Fire Code and of course NEC codes will always be changing in regards to energy storage systems. So we're just kind of trying to based on what we're seeing, what we see at shows, that we need to get the batteries out of the house. So um, anyway, I'm gonna put them out here. I'm gonna put them out in this area behind the array, trench in a grid and load feed. We're gonna do some cool stuff. Hopefully we're gonna do a load management, uh, load shedding of that five ton HVAC system. So it's a 200 amp service. We'll be running the whole house and we've added our DC our DC AC disconnect and our bypass system to the to the home. And then we're gonna go through to the other side on the side of the solar. We're gonna take a grid feeder. So the flow of power is from the meter base to the disco, all the way over to where I'm gonna put the Solark 15K with the slim line discover. Then then we're gonna come back from the load out and probably put that up here. I always like putting the solar system up for solar and grid down on the bottom side, but Willis and I argue about that all the time. So this is the AC side of things, and it just has a single 200 amp panel in the home. So for me, even though they're going to enjoy the benefit of no power bill, this is an R&D site for me to test batteries. Um, kind of a product integration of Solark and Discover. And then we're gonna trench over over here and transition from our direct berry and our control wires for load shedding. And we're gonna go over to the switch gear that you saw previously. All right. All right, enough of that. Let's get digging. You know, I do get bored doing the same thing, so we gotta make sure we change it up. Change it up a lot, change it up quite often. I changed it up so much today that I actually broke a panel with my machine. That was not the goal. But uh, what's going on here is a new, a new move for us, and that is to use Discover's new slimline battery cabinet, which is a NEMA 3R outdoor cabinet. And I bolted it down to a nice big concrete slab. I've got a 15k Solark landed on it. Wes is pulling in the PV. So we got PV and two, two 14 panel arrays. And then we've got um, a new move. <laughs> Again, outdoor 15k. If we ever needed to add more inverters, we could do a different configuration and put the inverters and mount them to the Discovers on the back or on the front. So this is our first attempt at doing this uh, product integration between Solark and Discover. And then we've got our, we're gonna have a control wire. We've got a one inch conduit that we can do some fun things with the battery. We can do rapid shutdown with the battery. We wanna test that. We also will do, like I said, play around with the relays for potential generator start, load shaving. You know, a lot of people are buying savants and lumens and all these other third-party load shaving devices this is built in with the discover battery system and we'll show you that hopefully 
that will be a, a nice move because a lot of those rely on the condition of the battery anyway so why not let the state of charge of the battery determine whether or not you can run a device in a grid down situation whether or not you have enough amp hours amperage and enough room to start it so all right this is how we transition from our direct berry 4 aught feeders to the 4 aught service entrance rated cable going over to our disconnects and bypasses and things so we just use the two pole polaris we call them pigs and um one to ones and there we have it i think the the grid is held together with polaris lugs and then that runs over here we've got these two 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 arrays wired up almost dressed up seasonal adjust uh turn this one into a privacy fence to block when my my daughter and her family are out on the deck nobody can see them so the solar panels are blocking nicely so I think this is going to work out well. Our utility is changing to time of use in about a month. What good timing. We're going to program this to handle the, the demand charge that they're going to be charged starting in three weeks. So that's going to be awesome to be able to use this Discover battery to deal with the demand charge, to deal with the peak. Let me peek in there, kiddo. So we have six 30 kilowatt hours. Six batteries at 30 kilowatt hours to discover lithium ferrophosphate batteries. I'm going to add the combiner on here, just showing you. This is, you put the batteries in, you get them all uh, grounded and ready to go. And then there's a nice combiner front with the, the Lynx um, relay, Lynx controller that's going to go on over top of that. And then we already punched some holes in here for the, the wiring trough. Now well, here comes the fun part. We just turned the batteries on using the Lynx gateway, communication gateway. See our little lights are flashing in here, so the batteries are talking to each other. And then you connect via USB to a laptop and their software, and it's telling me the condition of the battery, state of charge, voltage, got the right number of batteries detected, six batteries, 600 amp hours. And there's all sorts of things you can get into. Auto what? You just change those to auto. Yeah, so there's three relays built into this, and we're going to play that game soon with that five-ton HVAC unit because we ran a separate conduit for controls. So we want to load shave. When the grid is down, we want to load shave that five-ton unit out if we have to. And so we haven't played that game yet. What we're It's a nice feature to be able to, to do that. So here are the relays in the settings. We could start a generator. We could load shave some of the heavy loads. And we haven't done that yet, but we just were firing this up for the first time. But the beauty of the Discover Slimline Rack is, I think, the combiner. Heavy-duty battery cables, heavy-duty bus bars, and you got a lot of options at the bottom. You can use fuses, you can use breakers. We opted on this, in this case, just to land the home runs on the bus bars because we have a breaker in the Solark. But we're about to put 48 of these together and we're gonna we're gonna put a lot of overcurrent protection in the system and we just this is kind of a product integration for us we're calling it well the luna volt right now is what we're calling it it was the practical preppers power plant so i did get permission from discover to bolt the solark to this nema 3r cabinet however i can't tell you that now that now this whole system is NEMA 3R. So I'm, I'm, uh, we're still talking to Discover about all that. But awesome batteries. Cabinet is UL 9540A, 9540 and 9540A, I believe. And uh, we've been selling these in California because they seem to be the only one that can pass the, the test for the AHJs. So, all right. Probably have some questions about this battery. Fire away. Okay, it's a wrap. We're putting, uh, charging this battery nicely. Dumping around eight kilowatts into it. It was at 20%. I'm discharging it to 20% every day. We have this thing programmed to deal with the time of use settings, the peak charges that are coming for this utility, starting in two weeks. Where they're going to charge $13 per highest kilowatt hour in a month 
and that can be, you know, if you use 10KW, that'd be $130 charge added to your bill. So, and it's between the hours of three and six. So it's not like you're gonna turn your air conditioning off during that time uh, to try to save money. Most people are not. And so we've got the inverter programmed to handle the peak rates nicely on, to know that there's multiple calendars in there. So there's a peak charge during the summer from six to nine. And then there's the same, the same thing for the winter from six in the morning to 9 a.m. So the inverter is ready for that. If you need help with understanding that, let, let us know. Happy to get a system in for you. So this is a kind of a debut of what I'm calling the Luna Vault. Volt. So what are we doing? What is, what, why did we do that? Well, this is my daughter's house and she has a cat named Luna. <laughs> and then I got thinking, I said, Luna, this, you know, the name, Latin name for moon. And that's what we're doing. We're using this energy off hours. So we're taking solar energy, bringing it into the system, storing it for nighttime use. Um, so everything that this does is kind of outside of the solar window. So we're going to call it Luna Volt for now. And again, the, the next thing, we added a one inch conduit here for controls. So we ran that over to this five ton HVAC unit. So we're gonna use the relays built into the gateway on the Discover. Instead of having to buy a span or a lumen or some type of load control device, the Discover has the set of relays built in, so why not use them? So we're gonna take and run uh, just some thermostat, or we're gonna use sprinkler wire because uh, it's rated for outdoor use. So I bought some 14-2 sprinkler wire that I'm going to bring in here, and then we're going to go through and whip back on out to the contactor in here so we can get controls in possibly, or we'll run another one separate to hit the contactor in this HVAC unit to turn it off in a grid down situation. If there's not enough battery to run the five ton unit, then it'll load shave it out. And that way the house doesn't go down, the refrigeration stays going, lights work. But this is a, a huge load, the biggest load on the house. We just want to be able to control it. And we're going to use it with a built-in feature of the Discover battery as part of the LunaVolt product integration that we have here. So if you've got any questions about that, we'd be happy to help you get, uh, get this system. And again, in, in anticipation of some of these new battery codes, IFP... IFPA 855, uh, IFC 25, and we're not sure how it's going to be integrated into the National Electric Code, but the three are kind of discussing, and maybe we'll find out more when we go to Anaheim coming up, um, sitting in a couple more codes classes for somebody to interpret for me what is going to be allowed for lithium battery storage in a home, in a garage, outside. So we just thought we'd just get the battery away from the home, the inverter's away from the home. And so we're not even, we didn't even have to go in the home to make this entire system work. And so we've been monitoring it on the new MySolarc app. Everything's working great. We've tweaked the settings for time of use. I'll test this out just in time for the rate change for my daughter's utility. They're gonna start charging from three to six in the evening. Uh, at a rate of $13, yeah, that's $13, not 13 cents per kilowatt for the highest peak during the billing period, multiplied times the number of kilowatt hours in that, in that one hour. So what we're doing here is programming the Solark so that at three o'clock, we make sure the time of use settings are set up in such a way that First of all, we have enough battery to offset that three hour usage. And so you can see here as I scroll through, if you look at the yellow grid amounts, you'll see 11 watts, 12 watts, zero watts, 30 watts. So there's no kilowatts. So it's gonna be very little, if any money spent, maybe a, a penny or two during that time. And that will definitely be a way that we can lower the monthly power bill taking advantage of the battery and the time of use settings in the inverter. So I've done that for several, four or five systems now, getting ready for this utility to change their rate structure. Then there will be winter peak hours from 6 to 9 a.m. And we will do that as well. The nice thing about the Solar 15K, 
is that it has two or three calendars built in so we can set it up ahead of time. So in case you forget when your time of use energy charge goes into effect, um, you'll have it year round. So um, it's great having uh, my solar available to be able to go in and change these settings and to minimize the, the grid usage, especially during uh, peak charge time. Anyway, if you need any help with the uh, design of a system or understanding how this system works, let, let us know. We made provision to add two more of these slimline cabinets for the future, and um, it's all set to go to do that. So really liking this, and I hope that um, if you got any questions, you'll let me know. Um, we're, the next project, this is Luna Volt, and a preview is going to be Luna Vault. We're having it delivered today, and we're going to use six inverters and 48 Discover batteries going in. It's going to be a beast. So this is for a 200 amp smaller home, regular average home usage. And, now we're, and then the contrast will be our next project, which will be 48 Discover batteries, uh, eight slimline cabinets, and six 15K Solarks for a 400 amp service for a project we're working on right now. So actually the container we're waiting on right now is about to be delivered. Okay, this is Engineer 775, signing out.